Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we back at break, and a uh, young lady next to me, uh, her name is uh, Shirvidia. Uh, we uh, connected on uh, through Facebook, I believe, a messenger. We decided to do this interview for you about the art in the uh, artificial intelligence uh, space. Uh, so let's find out how this art thing works with artificial intelligence because I think that's a quite uh, interesting subject. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Hi, Alex. Th thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm very thrilled. I am a New York-based artist and I primarily work in three mediums, abstract photography, abstract expressionist art, paintings and AI generated art and AI generated art is obviously the most exciting part of my work and I have an upcoming show at the Viridian Artists Gallery in Chelsea um, starting on November 1st at 6 p.m. that's the opening night and all my my work in that show is predominantly going to be AI generated work all except for one work in that show is was all made by artificial intelligence and I'm asking my viewer, I'm asking the people that come to my show to tell me if they can find that work that was made by the human, me. Um, okay. Uh, is there a competition between humans and artificial intelligence yet uh, uh, for the art? Or can people, you know, really tell that that's a computer made or it's uh, actually human uh, thought behind this? That's a very interesting question. And... To answer that in the best way, I'm going to think about how to explain this from a historical perspective, like how did we start with artificial intelligence in the first place? So the first thing in the AI history, the first thing that we started to get machines to do is to think like, is to do uh, automate manual and tedious tasks for humans. So that's what we started with machines. And then the next evolution in that step was really to get human uh, to get computers to do things that were intuitive for humans but not necessarily able to be coded like for example getting computers to uh, recognize images and rec look at differentiate between images and differentiate between say a dog and a cat that would be such an intuitive thing for humans to do but then for a computer to learn that that was a little challenging but that was the second step in the evolution of ai and the third step really is to imbue the machines with creativity and that's where we are going next and it's a very interesting transformation that is happening and it's interesting also because the art world has not really caught up to think about what kind what this means for art itself like how does the, how does a machine generate how does artificial intelligent machines generating art is that really art and how do we define it and how lately do did uh, just uh, saw the the painting that uh, disappeared after the auction uh, uh, like it is shredded so that that's uh, art created right in, in front of a uh, human eye so that's also art yeah uh, he started painting on the streets and uh, they figured out that that's art so it could be art even if it's done by artificial intelligence still someone wrote that code someone built that artificial intelligence so we can compete uh, if the engine is better maybe the art is better uh, so it's uh, still a uh, uh, human behind this, maybe not directly, but indirectly. Uh, whoever wrote that artificial intelligence uh, uh, formula, maybe uh, is an artist in this sense, sense. Yes, in some ways, absolutely. And when you think about AI-generated art, before a machine can start to generate art on its own, it has to it has to see art from before. It has to have seen examples of art from before. So there was a paper that was published by the Google research team recently, which in which they showed millions of images to this computer and it start and, and they showed artworks from prior uh, famous artists and famous uh, art styles. And the computer now is able to generate art in that same style from before. And that was that, that's not art, that's copying. What I'm saying is like uh, when I'm talking about uh, 
artificial intelligence. Uh, for me, the main aspect that I curious about is being a selfless, like a human. Let's say a mother, if she is protecting her child, she doesn't care much for her own life. She would protect, uh, care for uh, a life of her child. The animal is protecting her, uh, their baby. So there are selfless acts that humans or animals, like life tissue, can do. But I don't think computer is capable of, uh, you know, uh, uh, being uh, selfless. Even though computer doesn't want to, you know, live or there is, n but it's still uh, uh, something that requires to be uh, biological uh, uh, rather than simulated uh, how the art the art is selfless uh, act when you actually give something away from you your soul uh, and put it on paper like how that artificial intelligence is capable of uh, you know capturing that uh, soul searching moment so art itself the output from a piece of art, like you said, is something that deeply touches your soul. It has to touch your soul, and that's that's when we call that's when we call a piece art. Okay. So absolutely, and um, some of the discussions that have been happening in the AI field itself in general, we have noticed that computers are very good at doing tasks, but they don't have certain level of empathy. And researchers all around the world are trying to figure out how to imbue machines with empathy. And that's the same question that can be applied to the art field itself in saying, if we can figure out how to make machines have empathy, mm -hmm. then we can also figure out how to make machines have creativity. Okay. So that is, that is the next step in the process of art itself. Uh, can you tell my audience a little bit about your background? Uh, seems like you you are quali quite knowledgeable on the subject. How do you come up with that kind of knowledge? Oh, sure. I predominantly have a technology background. I currently work in marketing science at Facebook. But before that, I've led um, data science teams at telecom companies and at advertising agencies. And I started off with an electrical engineering undergrad and in my grad school. At grad school, I was doing research on unmanned planes way before machine learning was cool and way before we were talking about um, self-driving vehicles. So there are some folks uh, like when we do, let's say, advertisement, uh, some folks are very technical and unless I show them very precise specifications and precise description, every little detail, they want to read through that stuff. And there are some people who don't want to see those uh, nuisance and this little uh, uh, text. They just want to see a couple of images, whether they're in love with this uh, subject or product or service, and they buy it or not. But it's they, some people are very visual and some people very technical you seems to come from a, a technical background but at the same time you uh, are in love with the art and the creative part how those two things uh, 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 survived in you and which one takes over hard to say which one takes over because if if I did art full-time then I will be searching for a hobby to do um, more analytical work and then if I was doing only analytical work full-time then art is my hobby so it's hard to pick one in, but in my case let me reiterate my question uh, let's say uh, I I'm, I love filming like as you see I'm filming now uh, our interview so when I go with my wife to see a movie uh, I'm not like I just saw the like uh, the star is born Madonna's uh, movie last week with my wife so we She's enjoying the movie and watching the the story, and I'm looking. Okay, this is this uh, this is uh, color corrected, and this is uh, how the frame was built, and uh, I'm just looking at the the process how that movie w w was filmed as a filmmaker. So, uh, 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 who comes first in you? Like, do you look? Okay, this is technically correct, and that that's a proper opening, and that's a, a proper composition and framing. Do you look at technical aspect first, uh, and then you? Okay, now I can enjoy the uh, the art uh, piece. Or you first see uh, the art itself. Oh my God, this is Picasso. The, the, this is beautiful. This is amazing. And then you start. Okay, he used that technique and he used that color and 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 that was the uh, uh, how he tells the story. Like what what comes first? That is so fascinating because that it, that happens to me also, absolutely. And um, I feel like you have a lot of aware self awareness in terms of what you usually end up doing when you go watch movies because you're a filmmaker and 
that's that's kind of how our human mind but functions. When, when you watch the art, yes, are you watching this as a technical person? Uh, oh, what kind of technique they use, or are you watching first as the uh, like artist? Do you, I admire that, and then you might. So attention. there are two there are two things going on here. Our mind itself is has two different parts. One part is completely analytical, and it mm -hmm. processes all the inputs really quickly, and it moves on to the next. It wants to um, look at the next thing and analyze the next input. And then there's this other mind that we have that is more deeper at some level, and it's calm, it's quiet. And there are some art pieces that you see that when you look at that piece of art, your analytical mind stops. Mm -hmm. And you're appreciating that piece of art from, your, from a more deeper inner mind. Mm -hmm. And I think in some ways, all of us are searching for that piece of art that makes you stop processing and analyzing and just enjoy it from your inner mind. And, I, and maybe if you see that same movie one more time, you will prob you, because you're finished analyzing it, the second time you see it, you're probably going to uh, enjoy it better. I, I will probably find uh, new things to technology. Okay. I